Imagine you're sitting in one of those newly released autonomous cars. Just enjoying the ride. The car approaches an intersection and the traffic light ahead suddenly turns red. Now pause for a moment and think. What happens if the car doesn't stop? Well, that would be life-threatening. A disaster. But now consider the opposite situation. Suppose the light is green and the car suddenly slams on the brakes for no reason. The people behind you would honk, get annoyed, and honestly, you'd lose trust in the car. So here's a simple yet profound question. How does the car actually figure out if the traffic light is red or green? The answer is that the car solves a classification task. It looks at the image captured by its camera, processes the pixels, and classifies the current light into one of the categories, red, yellow, or green. But here's something that may surprise you. Did you know that even something as simple as determining whether the windshield of the car is made of glass or iron is also a classification problem? Now, here's the twist I want you to consider. The car uses one kind of classification method to decide whether a traffic light is red or green. Meanwhile, physicists, when they classify something like whether a solid is glass or iron, use a totally different method. So if both data scientists and physicists are doing classification, yet they do it differently. What is the difference? Here is the answer in one sentence. Physicists use symmetry to classify, while machine learning uses similarity. If you're curious to see how classification is actually done in both machine learning and physics, and what we can learn by comparing these two worlds, stay with me. In the next few minutes, I'll take you through an eye-opening journey. Did you know that every machine learning model, from simple regression to image generating models like DAL-E, can be explained by a single elegant equation? If you're interested in learning machine learning in a unified way, visit our webpage at compuflare.com. This is a unique place to understand every machine learning model through one elegant equation from a physics-inspired perspective. In addition to the courses, we offer end-to-end -end intermediate and advanced projects that develop your skills, experience, and online presence, helping you land top industry roles. Visit CompuFlare.com and start building your data science career. Let's start with how classification is done in physics. In solid-state physics, the way atoms arrange themselves in space determines the physical and mechanical properties of a material. One powerful way to classify solids is by examining the geometric arrangement of atoms. Most materials you encounter daily fall into just four broad structural classes. The sugar you put in your tea, the glass in your phone screen, the metals used in your car, most of them fit into one of these categories. Face-centered cubic, body-centered cubic, hexagonal, close-packed, amorphous solids. Now, how do physicists identify which material belongs to which class? They look at their symmetries. Let's dive deeper to see how. Before that, we need to make ourselves familiar with a few geometric quantities in crystals. The first geometric quantity is the unit cell shape. The unit cell is the smallest repeating building block of a crystal. Think of a tile on the floor. If you take this tile and repeat it over and over in all directions, you cover the entire room. Similarly, if you copy the unit cell in all directions, you rebuild the entire crystal. This tiny cell allows scientists to describe an entire crystal by focusing on just one repeating block. For many crystals, the unit cell is cubic. For others, it looks like a hexagonal box, a prism. But in amorphous solids like glass, atoms are not arranged in repeating blocks at all, so there is no unit cell. Another geometric quantity is the nearest neighbor distance, the distance between one atom and the atoms directly touching it. And the last key geometric quantity is the lattice parameters. Lattice parameters describe the size and angles of the unit cell. They tell us how long each side of the unit cell is and what are the angles between those sides. For example, a cube has equal sides and all 90 degree angles. A hexagonal unit cell has two equal side lengths, a third side that is different, and one of the angles is 120 degrees. Now that we understand these geometric ideas, let's apply them to the four crystal classes. Materials like aluminum, copper, gold, silver, nickel, and lead belong to a class called face-centered cubic, often abbreviated as FCC. 
in FCC crystals, atoms are located at the eight corners of the cube and at the center of each of the six faces. Face-centered means each face of the cube hosts an atom right at its center. Corner atoms are shared among eight cubes, so each cube owns only one-eighth of a corner atom. Face atoms are shared between two cubes, so each contributes half. All sides of the unit cell have the same length, usually denoted by A, and nearest neighbors lie along the face diagonal with the following distance. Each atom touches 12 nearest neighbors, making FCC one of the most tightly packed structures found in nature. Metals with this structure are very ductile, easy to bend and reshape. Materials like iron at room temperature and steel belong to different class called body-centered cubic or BCC. Here, atoms are located at the eight corners of the cube, and one atom sits at the very center. The body-centered atom touches all eight corner atoms. Nearest neighbors lie along the body diagonal, which is represented by this equation. Each atom has eight nearest neighbors, fewer than FCC. So BCC is less densely packed. Metals with this structure are strong and hard, but less ductile. Materials like magnesium, zinc, titanium, beryllium, and cobalt fall into another class called hexagonal close pact, or HCP. Here, atoms are arranged in a hexagonal geometry, and there are six atoms per unit cell. HCP has the same packing efficiency as FCC, around 74%, and the nearest neighbor distance is A. Each atom touches 12 nearest neighbors. So FCC and HCP are equally dense, but HCP is less symmetrical. The last class I'd like to discuss is called amorphous solids. Glass, like in a car windshield, plastics, and gels belong to this class. These materials have no long-range order. Atoms are arranged randomly, like a frozen liquid. There's no repeating pattern and no unit cell. The nearest neighbor distance is also variable. At this point, you might think, well, the nearest neighbor distances differ between these crystals. Why not classify them based on that? It's tempting, but physicists do not classify crystals this way. They use something far more elegant, symmetry. Physicists classify crystals according to the symmetry operations that leave the crystal unchanged. These include rotations, mirror planes, inversion symmetry, translational symmetry. Let's look at some of the symmetries of the four crystal types we've discussed. FCC crystals have one of the highest symmetry levels among all crystal structures. For example, FCC has four threefold rotational axes, often called C3, running through its body diagonals. Rotate the crystal by 120 degrees and it looks identical. It also has three fourfold rotational axes, called C4, through the cube faces. Rotate 90 degrees, and it still looks the same. If a crystal has all these symmetries, it must belong to the FCC class. BCC crystals have slightly fewer symmetries. HCP even fewer. And amorphous solids? They have almost no symmetry at all. No translational or rotational symmetry. Pure randomness. At this point, let's switch gears and talk about classification in machine learning. The autonomous car doesn't use what I'm about to describe. It uses something much more advanced, like deep neural networks. But to keep things simple, let's learn the core idea using K-nearest neighbors, or KNN. KNN is one of the simplest and most intuitive classification algorithms. It is based on a completely different philosophy than physics. It relies on the idea that similar data points exist close to each other in feature space. KNN makes a prediction by comparing a new data point to the training data and looking at its k-nearest neighbors. You may notice the word neighbor again. We saw nearest neighbors in crystals, too. Even though the term is the same and it also has a sort of classifying power for crystals as well, physicists did not use it for classification, but machine learning does. Here's how KNN works step by step. Suppose you have a data set in which feature columns are shown by vectors x sub i, and the column holding the classes are shown by y sub i. First, we choose a value for k, the number of closest neighbors that we would like to pick. Next, we compute the distance between the new point x sub nu 
whose value we would like to predict, and every training point x sub i. The most commonly used distance measure in this algorithm is the Euclidean distance, defined as follows. In the next step, we select the k closest data points, those with the smallest distances from the data point that we would like to classify. Finally, we make a prediction based on majority voting among those neighbors. If most of the neighbors belong to class red light, the new point is labeled red light. What's fascinating is that KNN does not have a traditional training phase. It does not learn weights or parameters. It is called a lazy learner. Training simply means storing the data. All the computation happens at prediction time. Now, let's bring the two worlds together. In crystallography, physicists classify materials using symmetry. They ask, what transformations can I apply so the crystal looks unchanged? In machine learning, KNN classifies by similarity. It asks, which labeled examples are closest to this new example? Physics uses symmetry. Machine learning uses similarity. But which method is better? Before we answer, let me blow your mind. Those atoms that make aluminum, iron, and glass are not themselves elementary particles. Atoms are made of smaller particles. Break those further, and you get the elementary particles. And here's the incredible part. Elementary particles, the most fundamental building blocks of the universe, are also classified by symmetries. I'm not going to talk about religion, but let's imagine for a moment that the universe had a creator. If that were true, this creator would be communicating through the language of symmetry. If the universe itself uses symmetry as the most fundamental classification tool, maybe we should rethink how we design machine learning models. Maybe the future of machine learning lies not in similarity-based methods, but in symmetry-based methods. So, if you're someone who dreams of inventing the next breakthrough algorithm in machine learning, here is a powerful direction to explore. Bring symmetry into machine learning. That might be the key to building models that truly understand the universe the way physics does.